Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Rico's Garage. A very full Rico's Garage because it's snowing outside and I don't want to get the YJ covered in snow and the Camaro back there, it's got enough rot on it without letting it sit in the snow for another year. Kind of cramped in the shop today, but that's okay. For what we're going to do, it'll be fine. Today's victim, once again, the come and swap crew cab square body Chevy. Not really working on it today, per se, but I'm going to do a video that a lot of you have requested, and that video is going through and giving you a wiring diagram and a breakdown of what it takes as far as wiring to make the Cummins work in the square body Chevy. Now that may seem a little bit misleading because, as a few of you know, a mechanically injected diesel engine, once it is actually running, you can take the electricity out of the equation. However, for all the other systems in the truck, charging system, cooling, and getting the fuel shutoff solenoid to work with the key takes a little bit of wiring. Now it's not complicated at all. I've actually taken the time and done some third grade artwork over there on the dry erase board to explain to you and show in a diagram how everything works. Now pay attention as I'm going over that because a lot of this has already been covered in other videos. And while I am explaining those circuits to you, I'll throw the links up top so you can see more detailed videos on how those circuits are wired. The two things I haven't done additional videos on is the grid heaters and the cooling fans. Now I'll give you a brief rundown on those while I drew those out in a little more detail than I did the other circuits and we'll go over that. If you still want a video strictly on those to give more detail, drop me a comment down below, let me know. I'll be glad to put that together for you. With all that out of the way, let's cut the small talk, get over to the dry erase board and show you how this is all diagrammed out. Okay, now for everybody's favorite part, the third grade artwork. I know it's crude, but this is not an art channel. This is an automotive channel. And it gets the point across. It shows you how to wire this stuff. So, let's get into this. Let's start with the fuse box here. Nothing too extravagant. It's a universal six circuit ATO blade fuse box that I got from, uh, I believe I got it from O'Reilly's. You can get it at any parts store. Let's get into the first circuit here. 15, I put a 15 amp fuse in the first hole. It goes up and feeds the relays for the grid heaters. How I done that, I actually used the relays, cables, harness, everything from our 95 Dodge donor truck. If you don't remember our donor truck or if you haven't seen the video, I'll toss the link up here. But by having the donor truck, I was able to use stuff like that. It saved me quite a bit of time and money. The 15 amp fuse is going to the lower current positive side of the relays. Also on the low current side on the ground terminal, we're tying the two together going into the truck with a 50 amp push button. Positive side of the relay, the big post, goes through the cables with the factory fusible links straight to the positive terminal battery. The other side of the relays go to grid heater number one, grid heater number two. I have this wired up since I didn't d discuss this in another video in more detail. I just simply run the grid heaters off a of push button inside the truck. All I do is turn the key on when the fasten seat belts light and buzzer comes on I push the, and hold the push button for the grid heaters until the buzzer goes out. Then I'll crank the truck over with the grid heaters still on. Once it fires, let off the grid heaters. Seems to do just fine. That's not the way the factory did it. I know they had actually had the PCM controlling it and would cycle the grid heater depending on the temperature. So far I haven't needed all that. But like I say, I don't drive it that often in cold weather. I know there's other ways to do it. Please don't hate on it. For my application, it works. Next, 10 amp fuse going to a four prong relay controlling fan number one. Basic four prong relay, nothing too extravagant. One terminal goes to the battery, one terminal to the ground, one terminal to the load, which in this case is the fan, another terminal to the fuse box. Same thing for fan number two, not that complicated. Other side, 10 amp fuse going to the 
fuel shutoff solenoid keeper magnet which is a low current if you haven't yet wired up your fuel shutoff solenoid or if you're not familiar with how it works I'll toss a link up here explaining how I wired this in more detail but as far as this part goes it only needs the one low current wire for the keeper magnet circuit down underneath there goes to the voltage regulator relay in the Dodge application the voltage regulator was in the PCM. Well, we're not using the PCM in this truck, so we had to go with an external regulator. I've actually done two different videos on this topic. In video number one, link up here, I show you how we mounted an old school Chrysler external regulator on the firewall and wired it to work in lieu of the PCM. However, after doing that, we came up with an overcharging problem. So, to solve that, video number two, link up here, I show you how we use the relay to provide a good, clean 12-volt battery voltage to that alternator. So, watch video number one, and then watch video number two. That'll explain to you how to wire up your charging system and why you need this relay. All of this is feeding the lower current side of the relay. I don't remember off the top of my head, but the amp draw on these Bosch relays is minuscule. And some of you may be concerned about how I'm feeding it, which I will get to shortly. But what you gotta remember, the grid heaters, when they're running, nothing else here is gonna be running. At the most, what we're gonna have is the electric fans, the voltage regulator, and the keeper magnet. Now those all sound like high load devices, and they are, but what you got to remember, all that this is doing, this is closing, pulling in a small magnet which has a small amp draw. This one, this one, and this one, all they're doing is closing those relays, which, like I said before, is a minuscule amp draw. I should have looked that up beforehand, but I didn't, so I'm sorry. Feeding this is being done with the pink wire, uh, it's terminal number three, if you get a hold of a wiring factory wiregram, terminal number three on the firewall. What it is, is it's the old wire that fed the HEI distributor when this truck was a gasser. So there it is. It's not complicated at all. And I know it helps to have it drawn out where you can look at it and it seems overwhelming, but believe me, it's not. Let's get over to the truck, show you what it looks like, and wrap this up so you can get your project wired and fired. I know it helps a lot of you to have this diagram to look at. That's why I went through the trouble of making it. I realize it's not the greatest diagram. It doesn't have all the symbols in there, but a lot of you don't care about that stuff anyway. And those of you that are gonna pick it apart because it doesn't have the correct, you know, ground symbol and this, that, and the other, get a freaking life, all right? I'm going to zoom this camera in, let it set for a few frames, so you can screenshot this or whatever you want to do to help you out with your project. Okay guys, here we are on the driver's side inner fender of the truck and I tried to get as much, there's a lot going on here, I wanted to get as much in the shot as I could. There's a lot going on here and I wanted to get as much in the shot as I could at one time. Start off with, here's our fuse box and it turns out it actually has a part number on it. It's a bus 156-00. Zero six dash two zero, and I believe I got that from the local O'Reilly's here in town. Um, that is fed. Here is the pink wire I told you about, which was the factory HEI wire. And then I've got a few relays here. I used two of the uh, four pin. 30 amp relays from the parts store. Like I told you, those feed both the fans. Here is some relays I got off the donor truck. The larger one is actually the factory fuel shutoff solenoid relay. 
using it for that purpose. The smaller relay was the relay for the fuel heater, which I deleted off this truck because they leak and they're a pain in the ass. But I was able to use the relay to power up the voltage regulator because it works similar to the four prong Bosch relays. So again, when it comes to your donor truck, use every part of the Buffalo just like the Native Americans did. And then we have our two factory relays for our grid heater. But that's it. Everything fits compact. The fuel shutoff solenoid is right in line here. So the wiring can go there to it relatively easily. Keeps everything in one spot. The wire for the voltage regulator just follows the factory harness. Uh, hopefully seeing it and seeing the diagram helps you out because I know a lot of you have some questions with that and really want to see this video. So uh, let's wrap it up so you can get to working on your project. So there you have it. I hope this answers your questions as far as wiring up for the square body or actually for any project for that matter. Anything that you're putting your 12 valve Cummins in, you can use this same fuse box and wiring diagram. You just have to find you a circuit to run it that is key hot both in ignition and cranking. Pretty straightforward. Once you see it all laid out, I know a lot of you had a lot of questions with it and since there was some confusion, so I hope this clears this up. Wiring is not that difficult. Just take your time. If you know if you're not really good with terminating wires and things like that, find you a friend to help you with. But use good terminals, use heat shrink, and don't let it overwhelm you. You know, if you're doing this after work, the evenings and weekends, work on the fan circuit one night. Then work on the, the grid heaters the next night. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't think you have to get it all done in one shot because you don't. And you get tired of it, you walk away from it. But take the time, make it neat, make good connections, and you won't have any problems with it down the road, and you'll be glad you did. Be sure to like this video if it helped you out, which I hope it did. Share it if you know somebody that's in the same predicament and could use this same tech tip. And if you want to see more videos like this, of this project, or everything else we got working on, hit that subscribe button. And when you subscribe, ring the notification bell, because for some reason, even when you subscribe, YouTube doesn't necessarily believe this is what you want to watch. So ring that bell. We really want to get up to that thousand subscribers mark. That's going to help us make more content for you guys and make a better channel. So if I'm helping you, return the favor and help me out with that. So with that being said, get out there and work on your project. I'm Rico. And I'll catch you later.